Hi guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can create some cool time changing effects, showing you how to change speed and all sorts of things in Hitfilm 3 Express. So let's begin. Okay, so to start off with, you're obviously going to have to import your media by pressing the import button. Once you've imported your media, you can press right click make composite shot or drag it into your editor and once you've dragged it into your editor select it and press make composite shot you, you don't have to do this um, but you do have to do this for time displacement but um, it's a lot easier if you're working in a composite shot so I've got this clip it's just a simple clip of some ants um, that I filmed and uh, it's shot at 50 frames per second, which is a pretty high frame rate. Most video is shot at 25 or 30 frames per second depending on where you live. Now I've also got this video, which is a clip from YouTube. Um, this particular clip is from high school dance battle, cool kids versus geeks. Um, and I mean it's a pretty cool video, but I just got this scene to show you um, about slow motion and all sorts of things. Because it's like filmic, it was shot or at least exported in 24 frames per second. So less than a half the frame rate of this clip, and I'll show you why this matters later. So to start obviously changing your speed, you're going to have to search for the effect. So search for speed or find it under temporal and drag it straight onto your video layer. Once you've got it on your video layer, it's very quick to apply. Um, You'll notice this, and this is very, very, very simple. I wouldn't really use the slider if I were you, because it just doesn't work very well. It only works... I mean, it works pretty well, but you can also change it using here, and it's much more accurate. So, I'm just going to set it to 1 now, and you'll see that it still plays back normally. So 1 is basically 100%, or, well, 1 in decimals. So if I change this to 2, and I go back to the beginning, you'll see that it speeds up by twice as much. Now, it isn't playing back very smoothly because I haven't done a RAM preview, which if you didn't know, you can do by pressing this button right here. And it'll create a short section in your video, which you can play back perfectly smoothly. And uh, you can also change the quality to uh, change how long your RAM preview lasts for. But anyway, and as you can see, um, when I changed when I changed the speed, it didn't actually change the clip length as you would find in editors such as Final Cut. What it did was it it had the same clip length except halfway through the video, it simply blacks out. Now this isn't obviously very good. When you try to shorten the clip to that point where it blacks out, you'll notice that again just blacks out the second half of your video. This is even worse if you set it to something like four times because then only the first quarter of your video will be available and you'll be stuck with this black mess for the rest of it which is a bit of a shame. This is why you'd probably want to do this in a composite shot and not in the editor because then you really have some troubles when trimming your clips. So with that being said let's now move into slow motion. This is 0.5, so half the speed. As you can see, it doesn't change the clip duration again. This is arguably even worse because it cuts off half the video. You have to then extend it for even longer. Um, and if you set it to say 0.1, which is a one tenth of the speed, then you're really not doing yourself a favour because you have to extend it all the way, which is very, very time consuming. Alright, so I'm just going to do a quick RAM preview of this half speed clip and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, so the RAM preview has finished. I've set it to half, half resolution so it renders for a bit longer. But as you can see, it pray, plays back pretty smoothly. This is because I shot it at 50 frames per second and since we're used to seeing video play back at something like 25 frames per second, it still feels pretty smooth. Now. Unlike most editing applications, which will 
simply um, change the frame rate and you know have sort of jerky motion, HitFilm has a different sort of algorithm. As you can see in the first frame, this is a real frame. If I skip forward two frames, then this is also a real frame that I shot, except because this is played back at 50 frames per second, HitFilm still plays the 50 frames per second video back at 50 frames per second. So to fill in that gap where it used to be 50 frames per second and now it's 25, it creates a frame which is a 50% dissolve between the two of them. So it just merges the two frames together, putting one over the other at 50% opacity, and that will create an even smoother look. Now this can do you good and bad. For example, um, sometimes you don't actually want it to be this smooth. In this video here, it looks perfect. Um, really nice, smooth, slow motion, except there can be some downsides. For this, I'm going to go into this high school composite shot. Now, I've got this original clip, which I've just made to be 720p, so that it renders more easily. However, let me just set it to full for a bit. Okay. But you can see that it's actually got quite a lot of motion blur in here, already. As you can see, the hands are pretty blurred here, everything's really blurred, the legs are really blurred as they swing up. So, when we applied the speed effect, and uh, we changed the speed to something like 0.5, let me just do a quick RAM preview now, and I'll come back to you when it's finished and talk about why we might not want to have this sort of effect. Okay guys, so the RAM preview is finished and uh, now we're going to talk about why it doesn't really work so well. When you play back this video, it's somewhat jerky, yeah? If you, if you, if your film didn't do this frame blending thing, sure, it would be even more jerky. But there is a downside to this. The subject matter is really big. In this, in this frame and there's already a lot of motion blur. So when it moves just a bit, it looks like there's an absolute ton of motion blur, especially when the camera moves around a lot. See between these two frames, that is really unrealistic motion blur and there's no way it would blur that much and it keeps switching between these massive amounts of blur and these relatively small amounts of blur. So this is one downside, it looks really unrealistic and blurry. If I just change this to say 0.2 or something, then we can really start to see some of the downsides. We look here, this is just really blurry, and for all of these frames, it is just super blurry. There's no way we can get rid of this sort of blurriness, and uh, it really is a big downside. In the ants video, the subjects were really small. Sorry about this. In the ants video here, the subjects were really small, and we couldn't really notice it. Even when we set this to say 0.2, then, and uh, let's just do a, a quick RAM preview. And now the RAM preview is done, you can see that although it is pretty blurry still, it's nowhere near as bad as it was in the other video because the subjects are really small. In fact, if I wanted to use this video in a professional video production, this would be smooth enough for me and I'd probably use this as a proper slow motion clip. However, in this, sub in this video where there aren't many frames to blend properly and where the subject matter is really big and there's already a lot of motion blur, it really doesn't work, especially as you make these massive movements in the air. Okay, so now I've got all of that out of the way. Well, I haven't got anything. Okay, now that I've got all of that out of the way, um, we're going to have a look at some of the other effects in here. So, um, Let's just delete this speed for now, and uh, put on this echo. Now a lot of these effects are pretty basic, and you'll understand them pretty well. Now immediately you'll see that this is pretty bright, um, and it becomes bright at a certain point. Now if you if you could guess what echo does, then you'll be pretty well. You wouldn't be very smart because it's very easy to see what it does, really. So basically what it does is it 
creates an echo. So I'm going to set the echo time to be negative 0.5 seconds. And you can see here that it creates like an echo between the frames, or it has one frame from how it is now and one frame from how it was half a second ago. So if you do something like composite in back or something, there are all of these different um, blend modes that you can use to blend the two frames together. I'm going to use overlay because that shows them both pretty well. Um, however, you'll notice that at the beginning, for the first two frames, it doesn't actually apply the effect like it should. And uh, when we shorten the clip, it doesn't do anything either. Again, one of the downsides of this of these sorts of time effects, and why you should definitely use these in composite shots rather than in editors. There's all sorts of things such as decay, which is basically how much the frame is on for, the starting opacity, which is pretty self-explanatory, the number of echoes, which you probably don't want to set too high because it could lag your computer out rather considerably. Um, and of course, the echo time. Now let's just delete this echo and let's go for something called motion trails. Personally, for visual effects, I use motion trails all the time. Now, motion trails is a really cool effect where it creates fake motion blur. You wouldn't want to use this normally, but you could use this in a dreamy sort of effect or something like that. Now there are two options here, frame radius and phase. They're pretty simple. Frame radius is basically how many frames it's blurring together to create this blur. So, for example, one, that's just one frame that's doing zero, no. So one, it's creating a little bit of blur by blurring two frames together. If you have something like 10, then it's really blurry. So this can be really useful if you want to create uh, a soft appearance to one of your effects. And the phase is just how far forward or far back in this blur stage you are. And um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. So next is time reverse. This is even more self-explanatory than any of the others. And basically there's no options for it. It just reverses time. So all the lines that you see are just going backwards. Um, and this works relatively, relatively well. Now you might think, oh well can't I just do like negative numbers in speed? No you can't. Look what happens when you do negative numbers in speed. Everything goes black, so I wouldn't recommend you do that. Now there's one more which is time displacement for a layer only, which means you can only do it in a composite shot. So if you know, don't know what displacement is, it's basically moving moving something around so that it can sort of blend with it. It's very hard to explain. Um, I, I was first taught displacement in Photoshop, which is basically where if you had some crumpled paper texture and some text, you can displace the text so it looks like it's on the crumpled paper. However, time displacement actually is different to this because with every frame, however much movement there is, it will displace it by that amount. It's pretty hard to get your, your head around if you don't if you've never encountered this sort of thing before, but mess with some of the options and you'll see how it works. Let's just look at this ant here. So source none. You can use the red or the luminance to see how to to well to do it, basically to do the displacement. Um, and of course the blur, which blurs how much blows the displacement and uh, black time shift so the shadows and the white of course which will basically stretch things out or cramp them together and uh, this one final thing I want to talk about which is keyframes in this speed and of course you can make keyframes in any of the others other effects as well but I'm just going to talk about keyframes in speed not only can you change the speed in the clip, you can also change keyframes in this speed. Well, if you don't know what keyframes are, they're basically points in time of change. So for example, if I create a keyframe at the very first position, and I move to say 5 seconds later, and I create another keyframe, or say I can change the speed to say 0 0.5, 
um, 0.1, I can then, so if I have this speed set to say 2, and this set to 0.1, it will gradually, between the keyframes, change the speed from 2 to 0.1. So that gives me effective really, really fast, and then slowly, slowly, it goes really slow. And this is really nice because this is something you can't do with applications like iMovie or even applications like Final Cut Pro where you have these these clip duration changes. And this is one of the good things about having HitFilm's time system the way it is. Um, it's, it's really cool because you can do keyframe animations and things like this and you can combine them with motion trails and all sorts of things to create some really cool effects. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave a like, share this video with your friends, comment down below for suggestions on what I should do next, and of course, subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos just like this one. I will see you guys next Monday, if not earlier. See you later. Bye!